If you love me, take my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another of the whole cake to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth, the world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore. But you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands, asks and, and keeps them, is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. Your Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken. And while still with you, but the old, but the but the old king, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I live with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away, and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you will be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the Prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. The title of my message is The Holy Spirit Stands By You Always. A key verse, verse 15 and 16. So in the previous passage, we learned that Jesus is the only way to the Father because he knew where he came from and where he was going back to. And Jesus comforted his disciples not to be troubled due to his departure, but encouraged them to trust in God also trust in him because he was going to the father's house to prepare a place for them and he will come back and take them to be with him to be with him forever so jesus today jesus teaches his disciples that there is no separation anxiety because he will send them another advocate to be with them uh, forever here another advocate is the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit stand by us always. So look at verse 15. If you love me, keep my commands. Though the disciples loved Jesus humanly, they did not listen to his words. They were preoccupied with their own future security. And Jesus' promises were unreal to them. So remember in John chapter 13, Jesus gave them a new command to love one another. After showing, showing them how to love by washing their feet one by one. So love is a trademark of, of true Christians. Jesus knew that the disciples would, would do many great works by performing many miracle signs. But they would lack in loving one another. Love makes the commandments and the gospel complete. And love is a lifeline to all God-loving Christians. So if we love Jesus, we must obey Jesus' new command, which is to love one another as Jesus loved us. So remember, we talked about how we, can we love one another. So first thing is that we have to remember 
100 good things others have done and forgive one bad things others have done. But what do we do? We remember only one bad thing others have done and hold the grudge. But that's not the way to love. And second thing is that we don't criticize other believers in front of unbelievers. But we cannot do that. We cannot love others unless we know God's love. That's why 1 John 4, 19 says, we love because he first loved us. So look at verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. So this is the first time Jesus mentions the Holy Spirit very specifically. Though the disciples would be separated from Jesus physically, they would not be alone. How? Because God would send them another advocate. So here, the word advocate is translated from the Greek word paraclete, which also has been translated as a comforter or helper. The King James Version says comforter. We usually think of comfort as an emotional aid to overcome sorrow. But the fuller meaning of the word is to be with, you know, to fortify or make strong. So the comforter would be a source of strength when we are weak. A comforter would enable us to stand when we could not stand. The comforter enables us to carry out our mission victoriously overcoming all hardship. So while preparing this message, I also found out another less well-known translation of the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. It is, it is standby. So it is someone you call to stand by. It is someone who stands by you. The Holy Spirit is that person. The Holy Spirit will stand by you always. So there is a gospel song, Stand By Me, I, I listen to by Elvis Presley. So he goes like this, when the storms of life are raising, stand by me. When the storms of life are raising, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, thou who ruleth wind and water, stand by me. In the midst of force and failures, stand by me. In the midst of force and failures, stand by me. When I do the best I can and my friends misunderstand, thou who knowest all about me, stand by me. And there are several other verses I skip for the sake of time. You can look it, look it up. So the Holy Spirit will stand by you always. Amen. So here we need to know who the Holy Spirit is. So let me uh, briefly explain the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a, a force. Like in the Star Wars, you know, Star Wars, they say, may the force be with you. That's, Holy Spirit is not a force. You know, some people believe that you can observe a force in the universe so that we can use it for our own benefit. But that's not the case. The Holy Spirit is a person, the Spirit of God himself. So that's why Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. So you cannot grieve an impersonal object. You can grieve only a person. Also, the Holy Spirit cannot be manipulated to our use. A common fear is that the Holy Spirit will deal harshly with us and condemn us for our sins like a policeman. But it's not true, because the Spirit reveals God's wisdom to us with the peace, gentleness, and mercy. In fact, the Holy Spirit, one of the name is Wonderful Counselor. So another fear people have is that the Holy Spirit will seize control of them and make them do things against their will. Actually, the evil spirit have been known to do such things, but not the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is not a controlling spirit. He will lead us when we yield our way to him. Remember the song we sang, Spirit leads me. 
He will not shout at us and or try to control us against our will. He will gently guide us and tell us what God wants us to do. So if we do not obey his teaching, obey his voice, if we do not heed his voice, he will usually let us do what we want, even though it may grieve God. And if we do on our own, we'll have to suffer the consequences. But the Holy Spirit will let us do that. So we can think of the Holy Spirit as a radio waves. Do you know that there, there are radio waves everywhere, even here? But we have to tune in to its frequency, to listen to a particular station. So likewise, we have to make a conscious decision to tune in, to listen to the Holy Spirit. So his frequency, the Holy Spirit frequency, is love and obedience. So when you tune in, we can know the wonderful things of God. So like in Isaiah 11, 2 says, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So the Bible presents the Holy Spirit as the member of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, Holy Spirit. So Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was over, hovering over the waters. So the Holy Spirit was there when God created the whole world. And he was participating. The Spirit of God participated in the activity of creation from the beginning. And though in the Old Testament, God revealed His will through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was given to several chosen servants of God like uh, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Deborah, Gideon, Samuel, David, and Elijah, and so on. So the role of the Holy Spirit was limited to specially chosen people. But after Jesus' ascension, the Holy Spirit was poured out to all people as we studied in Acts chapter 2. He says, in the last days, God said, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit signals a new era of God's grace. So the promise of the Holy Spirit will be given to the disciples when Jesus ascends to the heaven. And this promise was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, we studied uh, last year. So the disciples were empowered to carry out the gospel of God, gospel of Jesus to the ends of the earth when they received the Holy Spirit, when they received the power of the Holy Spirit. So the role of the Holy Spirit is vital for us to live a holy life. So every believer needs the power of the Holy Spirit to live a victorious life of faith. So look at verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. So the Holy Spirit coming is the reason why the disciples should not be troubled at the news of Jesus imminent departure from this world. It was for their own benefit because Jesus as a person can be with the one person only limited at most 12. But the Holy Spirit as a spirit, he can be with million or billion people simultaneously. So the Holy Spirit will be with them uh, forever. Jesus would not leave them alone like abandoned children. Jesus will be with them through the Holy Spirit until the end of the age. So look at verse 17a. The world cannot accept him because he neither sees him nor knows him. So if you speak to unbelievers about God, many say that they know God. And they know what you are talking about. And if you talk about Jesus, most of them know who you mean. But if you mention the Holy Spirit, they don't have a clue. They don't know what you're talking about. That's what Jesus is talking about here. So there are many deceptive people in the world, 
sometimes we are confused about how to live in this world. We don't know who speaks the truth. But the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He protects all believers from deception and opens our eyes to discern what is right and what is wrong. And he leads us to the path of the truth. So the, as long as the Holy Spirit is with us, we are safe. He dwells in us uh, forever. First Corinthians chapter 6, 19 says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? The Holy Spirit by indwelling us has made us his temple. So that's why we have to keep our body holy and healthy because the Holy Spirit indwells in us forever. This is the gift of God. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is absolutely necessary for us to fulfill God's will. So without the help of the Holy Spirit, we are weak and easy to stumble due to many temptations. So the indwelling of the Holy Spirit makes us possible for a Christian to live a holy life. But the promise of the Holy Spirit did not touch the disciples much at this time because they were preoccupied with Jesus leaving, leaving them. There are, there are two worlds, the physical world and the spiritual world. There are two kinds of spirit, evil spirits and the Holy Spirit. An evil spirit is a spirit that makes a man slave to fear and frustration. But the, through the Holy Spirit, we can overcome fear and have, have the assurance of salvation. So when the Holy Spirit comes to a person, he's born again into a new person. So for example, remember we, we studied Simon Peter in the previous chapter. He had a big mouth. He said, I will never disown you even if ever, all fall away. But as you, you saw, he was a coward. During Jesus' trial, he denied Jesus three times before a little girl saying, I don't know or understand what you are talking about. So later he ran away, locked himself in a room, and suffered from fear of the Jerusalem police. But when he received the Holy Spirit, he became bold, bold enough to proclaim the gospel to the whole world. And they say that he went to even Rome and uh, was crucified upside down there. And before that, he spoke before the Sanhedrin members in Acts chapter 5. He said, we must obey God rather than man. And, his, and he also became a powerful messenger and delivered a powerful resurrection message. And at his preaching, 3,000 people were saved that day. So what do Jesus' disciples respond? Look at verse 22. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? He grieved because Jesus did not show himself off to the world. He, he really did not understand why Jesus wasted all his time with the twelve alone. He hoped that Jesus would show himself to the whole world. He also hoped that Jesus would rise in power as the political messiah and destroy God's enemies all at once. So sometimes you uh, wonder like Judas, right? He say, why doesn't God reveal himself like a superman and taser all those who do not believe? But uh, look at verse 23. Jesus answered, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them. He will come to them and make our home with them. So when Jesus comes again, he will reveal himself as the judge and condemns all those who do not believe. But not now, not now. At the moment, he wants to establish an intimate love relationship with us. So how wonderful it is that the Almighty God comes to us with his son Jesus and make their home with us. So look at verse 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, and will remind you everything I have said to you. So there will be two problems if you want to love God. Ignorance and forgetfulness. We don't always know what God's will is. Even if we know, we forget. 
so the Holy Spirit will help us with both. Jesus also promised Judas that he, will, he would have the peace of God when he received the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Who can give us peace in this troubled world? But Jesus says, my peace I give you. People think of peace ha as having no conflict, but that's not real peace. There are many problems in this world. Some people think that they can have peace by escaping from the realities of the world. Some people think that they can have peace by going to a vapor shop and inhaling marijuana and, and uh, drinking beers. Do you, can you have a peace? Maybe a, for, for momentarily, but not lasting peace. Some people think that they can have peace by their positive thinking. But in reality, there is no lasting peace. The peace the world gives is temporary. It's like the surface of the sea for a few minutes. So it is a, for a few minutes it's quiet and gentle, but it is stirred up by a storm. But the peace God gives is, the, is like the undercurrent of the sea, which flows quietly and steadily, unaffected by the storms that rage above it. The peace of God is actually freedom from fear and anxiety. So if you read the Psalm chapter 43, the Psalmist was very anxious. Actually, I talked to one student last week. He said that he has anxiety about the future. And I realized that all students are, actually I also have anxiety about the future. So he, he rebuked his soul. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him for my, my Savior and my God. So when you feel anxious and no peace in your soul, remember Jesus' promise of peace and his rebuke. Let's hear Jesus' rebuke. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So let's uh, uh, say all uh, together. Okay, let's go. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So when you feel anxious, remember, say to your soul, Jesus promised. Okay, look at verse 28. You heard me say, I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you loved me, you'd be glad that I'm going to the Father for the Father is greater than I. Until now, Jesus served sinners and became like a servant. But when he comes again, he will not come as a servant. He will come as the King of kings and Lord of lords. If the disciples had known this, they would have been happy having the assurance of victory. Look at verse 30. I will not speak with you much longer, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me. The prince of this world is one of the names of Satan. Satan enticed Judas Iscariot to betray Jesus. But Satan has no grip on Jesus because Jesus obeyed his father and died on the cross. And Jesus also would rise again from the dead to conquer death. The reason Jesus would go back to the father to sit at the right hand of him. In the end, Jesus believed that their sorrow will turn to joy when they receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. So in conclusion, so today we learn that the Holy Spirit dwells in those who love God. He's the advocate who stands by us always and who leads us into the truth. So as he dwells in us, he transforms us into Jesus' image. He gives us God's peace. So let's tune in, tune in to the Holy Spirit and listen to him so that we may be led by the Holy Spirit every day.